Yeah, yeah. But everybody, I mean, three and a half pounds of pressure. Yeah. So are you are y'all taking Tom to to beat Curtis? Because I have the, yeah. the follow up. I am yes. Yeah, yes. I, I am as well, and, and I do think he's going to win by by knockout. Mm -hmm. The follow up question to mm -hmm. that for for you and for Kevin. Let's say Tom goes out there and knocks out Curtis Blades, mm -hmm. and let's say that what we all probably think is going to happen, John Jones walks through Stipe Miocic. No disrespect to Stipe. No. But, you know, Stipe. I can answer that before you even get there. No. <laughs> if it's not John Jones versus um, versus Alex, there needs to be no more John Jones fights. And it's yeah, like okay. it's like Tom. Tom's doing a great job. Tom's going to end up becoming, you know, uh, you know, heavyweight king. Great. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Props for Tom. And it's like not everybody needs to fight the legend. And legends need to fight legends. Right. Yeah. Tom's Do not a legend the yet. Interim belt being an issue though, seeing as like he's defending it, Keep it. probably multiple times. Keep right? it. It's like they have a BMF belt at forty five. That's that's Sean Shelby's weight class. And it's like Mick <laughs> Mick deserves a BMF belt. You know? yeah. It's like who better to fight for it than fucking Alex Pereira and John Jones. There you you know? know, it's yeah. like fuck who the fuck needs a regular belt at that point in time, right? We're fighting for the baddest motherfucker. Right. Those two right there, right now, you know, it's kinda hard to argue that there's anybody better. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So and it's like you know we don't we don't really we don't really need a belt you know we have popularity and, and we have you know legendary statuses on their sides yeah. so I honestly would like to see those two and if it's not those two then Aspinall can continue to become the the most dominant interim uh, champ there is and and we have to forget we can't forget that Hannah Burrell back in the day was a very very dominant uh, interim champ fantastic interim champ then he fought for the belt and got his ass kicked yeah. so it's like you know enjoy where you are be happy where you are. Don't ask for too much. Bad shit won't happen. You know, it's like, let John do what John does. He has a couple more fights left. And it's like, maybe Tom Aspinall is the person to beat John Jones. I don't fucking want to see it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like me personally. And it's like, um, I just don't want to see it. You know, it's like, if you want to see if John Jones is going to lose to anybody, it needs to beat Alex Pereira. So for you, it's Stipe Miocic, then Alex. And if it's not Alex, retire. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I actually I, agree I with that wholeheartedly. That. Yeah. I think that's I very that. intelligent. I, yeah. I, I think that is the absolute right move. At some point, you start fighting. And in, in my opinion, John Jones. You're fighting he's yourself. Not, he's not, yeah. yeah. He's not undefeated, but he technically only lost a fight by beating somebody so bad and throwing an illegal strike. So why just go out there and fight until you lose? Mm -hmm. why, why don't don't keep testing it? Eventually, somebody's going to get lucky, or you're going to get too old. And so, like you said, legends should fight legends. Tom Aspinall will be a legend, but right now, I think they just need to let these big names and and uh, yeah. Alex Pereira is such he's like you, a company man. You guys both fit into the category, and we talk about the BMF more than probably most MMA channels do, just because anytime somebody does something BMF worthy, we throw them into the list. And yeah. you've made it a few times off of some, some cool you, shit you've you. done in the sport. Yeah, Kev, you're on the list. But, like, uh, I mean, there should be a BMF. There should be a BMF every two to three weight classes, yeah. I think. I, I agree with that. You can't fight Max Holloway. You know no, what I, I mean? So how do you get the BMF belt? I agree with that 100%. You know, it's like uh, originally I was going down to 70 because I felt like, you know, I feel like the BMF belt was something that was, was grabbable. Yeah. Uh, and then they took it down even further. And I was like, well, I ain't cutting no more fucking weight. I'm not I, yeah, man, I had to lose a leg for this shit. Yeah, right. You know, um, than 145 pounds <laughs> it, it, it gets rough, you know, it gets rough. And then, you know, you start to think about it and you say, well, the women never get a chance to win one, you know, and it's like, uh, and then, you know, you got a lot of guys that say, well, fuck, they don't get it. They don't get a chance. And it's like, they do, they do, they do. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell Amanda if she was here that she didn't get a chance, you know, and it's like, you got that new Kayla, you know, chick around here and she's asking for one. And it's like, it's kind of hard to tell her, no, that she doesn't get one. Right. You know, and it's like, um, and then you got heavyweights heavyweights will never get a bmf belt they're the biggest baddest motherfuckers there is you know it's right. kind of hard you know it's like you can't be 145 pounds that you're going to be the heavyweight unless you're max holloway going against a dc in an eaton competition yeah. you yeah. know yeah. so and my my one opinion on the bmf belt i i'm all for more bmf just because it seems more fair and it just seems like a cool lineage that could should yeah. grow but the cool thing about it and we talked about it when it first came out like it's kind of cool that there's one of these belts floating around and there's not a division it's tied to and I, I was saying back in the day, I was like, I hope it sways lower because once these weight classes start to compete for BMF and then it moves up into 75, 85, or 70, 85, 205, these little weight classes are never going to touch it again because no heavyweight's going to lose to a light heavyweight who's then going to lose to a 85 or so. You it's never cool. know. They're getting to, getting to touch it right now, but I see it making its way back up. And yeah, I mean, if the belt made its way, let's say just an extreme example it worked its way up you know kev got it and then it went up to 185 or 205 and tom aspinall gets the bmf belt yeah. well 
it's probably going to stay at heavyweight for a little while. Sugar Sean's not touching it anytime. (laughs) Right, exactly. Well, then you you always always have that devastating hitter in Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira could always take it back to 205. Israel Asanya could always get lucky and take it back to 85. And then you could always have a 70 guy who gets lucky and takes it off of him and takes it back to 70. And now it's floating back in the lower weight classes. So the belt could always float up and down. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. When it gets up high, it's going to get really hard to come back down. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, 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 ye